In this episode, I'll be eating my way through Italy, happy diabetic style, taking the slow road to discover all the hidden treasures of the amazing Italian Mediterranean dinner table. This episode of the Happy Diabetic Kitchen Podcast is sponsored by my diabetes supplier, U.S. Med. U.S. Med offers free shipping and a 90-day supply with every order. To see how they can simplify your diabetes care, call 1-877-840-8218. I did, and I can feel the love. Remember, there is a much better solution, U.S. Med. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Happy Diabetic Kitchen. I am your host, Chef Robert Lewis, the Happy Diabetic, and this is the Internet's most delicious cooking podcast. I'm here in the kitchen getting ready to explore a healthy diabetic lifestyle. I want to take the mystery out of healthy cooking and explore some amazing foods and my diabetic journey with all my successes and all my challenges. So let me help you live your best happy diabetic lifestyle. So welcome to the kitchen. And if you're new to the show, I am so happy you're here today. Again, welcome. In today's podcast, you know, we've been talking about the amazing Mediterranean diet from Italy, from Greece, around the Mediterranean Sea. So today, we'll start our journey discovering the Italian slow road style of eating and cooking with my happy diabetic twist. Let's be honest. Who doesn't love delicious Italian food? So we'll travel the many regions of Italy as I've experienced them in my travels. We'll also explore the cooking terms and food definitions I discovered while visiting Italy. And in the episodes to come, let's discover authentic Italian cooking, the happy diabetic chef way. The recipe of the podcast this week is what I learned traveling to Italy. Delicious and healthy and simple to make. Our first stop will be Reggio Emilia and my inspired Parmigiano Reggiano Prosciutto di Parma spinach stuffed chicken breast of love. And I'm also going to talk a little bit about roasted fruit. In this podcast, roasted apples. Also, my tips from my cooking school, the Culinary Institute of America. These are cooking tips I learned while in chef school. So stay tuned and we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back everybody. So let's get right into the tips from my cooking school, the Culinary Institute of America. I went to chef school there in 1976, and it was an amazing experience. So I'm sharing my tips with you to make you the best chef in your home kitchen. So today, I want to talk about the mise en place. Do the mise en place thing and stay calm in the kitchen. Mise en place is a simple French term that means everything in its place. Simply put, prep all your ingredients before cooking. Lay them all out in small little containers so you have it ready to go so when it's time to execute on the recipe, it's simple to add all the ingredients. That way, you're not scrambling to chop the garlic when it's needed to be in the pan five minutes ago. So yeah, let's do the mise en place thing. That is my cooking tip that I learned from the Culinary Institute of America. All right, stay tuned, and we'll be right back. All right, welcome back, everybody, to our Italian food tour. Our first stop on our Italian voyage is the city of Reggio Emilia. Wow, what an amazing city, so friendly. Reggio Emilia is located in northern Italy, in the Po River Valley, about 50 kilometers from Bologna on the Via Emilia. Reggio Emilia borders Parma's territory to the west and Modena's territory to the east. In the north, the Po River separates its territory from the province of Matuna, 
while in the south, the Apennine Mountains mark the border with Liguria and Tuscany. The people are proud, yet so very friendly. In fact, I'd say I encountered some of the friendliest Italians ever in Reggio Emilia. While the area is not typically frequented by tourists, locals seem very eager to welcome visitors. Nowadays, famous for gastronomy, lifestyle quality, and internationally known as the best kindergartens in the world, Reggio Emilia is known for a town of art whose symbols are in the 17th century Basilica della Garda and the famous Teatro Municipale Viale. Did you know that Italy's tricolor flag was first adopted in Reggio Emilia? There is the Tricolore Room in the City Hall and a small museum where you can learn all about the flag and how it was chosen to represent the Republic in 1797. Now that's like 60 years before Italy ever became a country. Another fun fact is all these little cities, such as Reggio Emilia, are about 30 kilometers apart because that's how far a Roman soldier could travel in a day. But let's get real. It's all about the food valley of Italy. Ask any Italian where their favorite place to eat is, and their response will undoubtedly be, well, my mama's kitchen. But if we change the context of the question and extend it to include an area, a wider area than their mama's kitchen, the answer will most likely be Emilia Romagna. The region's cuisine is known for one of the finest in the world. There are a number of reasons for this, one tastier than the next. Just think of Emilia Romagna's vast collection of PDOs, protected designation of origin products, and the PGIs, protected geographical indication products, which are not easy to come by elsewhere. Credit goes to the region's local products. Emilia Romagna is home of some of the culinary specialties that have really led to Italy's worldwide fame, such as Parmigiano Reggiano cheese, Parma ham, traditional balsamic vinegar from Modena and Reggio Emilia, salamis, tagliatelles, tortellini pastas. Who hasn't heard of at least one of those? Reggio Emilia is known for producing Reggio Emilia Parmigiano. Parmigiano Reggiano cheese and balsamic vinegar. But I also recommend tasting the herbed pumpkin ravioli when you can find it on a local menu. I loved walking through the streets. You'll find countless bakeries luring you in with fresh made sweets. There's also some of the most creative, inspiring coffee shops I've ever visited. But you have to talk about Parmesan cheese. No, no, no. Not the cheese in the green containers on aisle four at your local supermarket. I'm talking about the king of cheeses, Parmigiano Reggiano cheese, the real deal. And let's just chat a little bit about what it is, where it comes from, and the cows that produce it. So you need to know there's only three ingredients of what they call the king of cheese. It's red cow breed milk, salt, and rennet. Milk salt, and rennet. But to be Parmigiano Reggiano, it's got to be made with the red cow breed of milk. While visiting this amazing city, we had the chance to visit a historical cheese hub and factory. Con Sorizo Vache Rosa Cheese Factory to learn just how it's done. So this historical cheese factory, just on the outskirts of town, is an amazing producer of this specialty cheese. It's the only cheese factory in the world, in the world, where they produce and transform exclusively the milk of the red cows. The milk of the red cow breed has some very basic characteristics that differ from traditional Parmigiano Reggiano found everywhere else in the region or even in the world. The red cow produces a third less milk than its cousin, the Holstein breed. In particular, in the red cow's milk, there's a variation of casein, the essential protein in the cheese-making process of transforming milk into cheese. 
it guarantees a better process to age the cheese longer and have better digestibility. And for that reason, the production regulations of the Red Cow Parmigiano Reggiano provide that that product can only be sold after at least 24 months of aging, compared to 12 months of the traditional Parmigiano Reggiano cheese found all over the world. The result is a cheese that, despite the long aging, is sweet, delicate, and has a very, very persistent taste. The characteristic color is straw yellow, and the elasticity of the grain is very unique. Amazing things about this cheese is that it has a very strong but super delicate aroma even after 30 months of aging. Typically, 24, 30, 40, 60, 72 months of aging is typical for this cheese. The longer the aging, the pricier this cheese is. But oh my gosh, so well worth it. So if you've never had Parmigiano or Reggiano from Italy compared to the green container of Parmesan cheese, buy a small piece, give it a try. It might very well change your life. It's pricey. It's not cheap. But for certain foods, wow, what a difference it'll make on your dinner table. So what about the arts in this city. Oh my gosh. Everywhere you turn, there is art. Every wall, every statue, every road, every alley you go down to, you will find some amazing, amazing artwork for centuries and centuries that have been left there as part of the city's really cultural art renaissance. If you Google Reggio Emilia, the first couple results in your search are likely to be about a method of education. That's because the region is famous for its philosophy of teaching that focuses on encouraging children to explore their interests rather than what's required or needed. I mean, it's an amazing revolutionary educational program that starts in kindergarten. So while we were having breakfast, at the Hotel Posta, which is a hotel 400 years old, amazing, we actually struck up conversations with fellow travelers who were teachers heading out to a conference studying the Reggio Emilia approach in Italy. What a small world. Another thing I loved about the city was their commitment to bicycles. Bike trails everywhere, bicycles everywhere. Sydney and I are hobby cyclists. We love to bike, and in our town here in Iowa, we have lots of biking paths. But I was so impressed with the bike areas of Reggio Emilia, totally impressed. The culture here, when it comes to biking, was unbelievable. It seems to be the preferred mode of transportation, whether pedaling something sporty, stylish, electric, tricycle. Look, if you feel like going for a ride or just a stroll around town, Reggio Emilia has the longest city bike trails in all of Italy. I couldn't stop taking pictures of all the beautiful scenery, the bicycles, and all of the amazing areas that this city has to offer. So to summarize, Reggio Emilia, amazing food, cheeses, vinegars, meats, unbelievable. Art and architecture, second to none bicycle culture, coffee shops, bakeries, and the people are the friendliest ever. Another thing we really love about that area is that it's off the beaten path, not heavily touristy travel. So that was kind of interesting. Now, we could easily jump on a train to Modena, to Bologna, to Parma, to the north, and Modena and Bologna to the south, $2, $3, $4, super cheap, easy to get around, and a wonderful place to be based and have some amazing day trips. So, love that area of the world, and it was certainly one of my favorite spots that we traveled in Italy, and I can't wait to go back. So much amazing food. That's what inspired the recipe of the podcast today. All right, when we come back, 
it's time for the recipe of the podcast. My Reggio Emilia inspired Parmigiano Reggiano prosciutto di Parma and spinach stuffed chicken breast of love. Welcome back, everybody. It's time for the recipe of the podcast. You will find this recipe on my website, happydiabetic.com. Under the blog posting, you'll see it right there. My inspired from Reggio Emilia, Parmigiano Reggiano, Prosciutto di Parma, and spinach stuffed chicken breast. So let's get right into it. Now, you'll find this recipe on my website, happydiabetic.com, under the blog area, and you'll see it right there. So let's just talk about what's in it and what you'll need to create this amazing and simple dish. You'll need some fresh frozen spinach, some sun-dried tomatoes, some prosciutto ham, easy to find at your local supermarket, and some shredded Parmigiano Reggiano. You'll need some garlic, pepper and salt, and two boneless, skinless chicken breasts, about five to six ounces each, at least a tablespoon of olive oil, and you're going to use this in two different ways, at least a half a pound of fresh asparagus, because I love asparagus, and aged balsamic vinegar or balsamic glaze. Okay, let's put it together. You're going to preheat the oven at 400 degrees. And in a small bowl, we'll combine the spinach, sun-dried tomatoes, cheese, garlic, a little pepper, a little salt. Mix that all together. Then we're going to cut a pocket horizontally in the thickest part of the chicken breast. And we're going to fill it with the spinach mixture. And we're going to lay the ham slices also on top of the mixture. Now, I like to secure the chicken breast with toothpicks so it doesn't fall apart during the cooking. In an 8-inch, I prefer, cast iron or oven-proof skillet, we're going to heat about 1.5 teaspoons of oil over medium heat until it starts to shimmer. And we're going to brown the chicken on both sides. Then we're simply going to place it in the oven and bake for anywhere between 10 to 20 minutes because I don't know what your oven is like. But what we're looking for is about 165 degrees internal temperature. So meanwhile, while it's in the oven cooking, grab your asparagus with the remaining salt, pepper, and a little bit of oil. And we're going to add that to the skillet along with the chicken. Put it right in there. And we're going to bake the whole thing, the chicken, when you've inserted a thermometer, should read 165 degrees and the asparagus is nice and tender. Now, every oven's different. You may need 10 to 15 minutes longer. It's really hard to know. But it shouldn't take more than 30 minutes total. And if needed, drizzle the asparagus with your balsamic vinegar or vinegar glaze. I love it that way. Now, be sure to remove the tooth picks before serving. Ouch! Because I, I can guarantee you, they do hurt. So, this recipe has about 347 calories and 113, sorry, not 100, 13 grams of carbohydrates. It's a happy diabetic friendly style way of eating. Delicious and easy and oh, I, it's, it just smells so good. For a simple dessert, I would suggest roasting fruit. It's an excellent way to incorporate fruit into your diet in a very delicious way. And all throughout Italy, I saw people doing amazing things with fruit. So I want to talk about roasted fruit. In this case, let's roast some apples. Roasted and caramelized, this fast and simple recipe is a little different from your mother's baked apples. It's super simple. We're going to start by washing and coring a few different varieties of apples. Some red, some green, some yellow. I love the color. That's why I like to slice them into wedges with the peel still on. We're going to place the wedges in an oven-proof dish, season them with a little orange juice, brown sugar, or honey, or agave, and a pinch of nutmeg and lots of cinnamon, and some coarsely chopped almonds. Simply bake them in a hot oven at about 390 to 400 degrees for about 15 to 20 minutes and serve them warm with a small 
spoonful of whipped cream, or your favorite ice cream. Seriously, these are baked apples to die for. Okay, that's it. My amazing Reggio Emilia-inspired recipe of the podcast. And this recipe, like all my recipes, you can find at my website, happydiabetic.com. Just head to the blog section of the website and you will find it there. All right, everybody, stay tuned. We will be right back. So I know this is hard to believe, but I recently signed up for Medicare. Now, what about my Libre 2 system from Abbott? As my pharmacy was trying to figure it all out, all the complicated paperwork, I was getting a little frustrated, and quite honestly, so were they. So I called U.S. Med to see if there was a better way. And guess what? There is. Their motto is better service, better care. It's what they call white glove service. And quite honestly, I was worn out by having to make multiple trips to the pharmacy only to discover the orders were not even ready. Long lines, or they would say, we need to call your doctor. We need to get confirmation for the refill. It went back and forth and back and forth. And after about two weeks of this, I absolutely had it. I would reach out to the pharmacy and they would say, the doc never called us back or they never followed up. That's the thing I hated the most. Are you ready for U.S. Med to always provide you 90 days worth of supplies with fast, free shipping? Yes, free shipping. Look, they carry everything from insulin pumps to diabetic testing supplies to the latest CGMs, the Freestyle Libre 2 and 3, and the Dexcom G6. You know my love for the Libre 2 system, and U.S. Med is the number one distributor for the Libre 2 systems nationwide. Look, if you're just starting with Medicare like me, U.S. Med should be your very next call. They accept Medicare nationwide and a broad private insurance coverage with over 800, that's right, 800 private insurers, plus an A-plus rating from the Better Business Bureau. If you're looking for supplies from everything from insulin pumps to diabetes testing supplies to the latest CGMs, and you're looking for better service, easier service, delivered right to your door, free shipping, U.S. Med is who you should be getting a hold of. Dial this number right now. Well, why don't you wait till the podcast is over? 888-885-0012 or simply go to usmed.com forward slash happy diabetic. Don't wait any longer. Oh, wait a second. I think that's my doorbell. I think that's U.S. Med delivering my 90-day supply now. Call them or go to the website, usmed.com forward slash happy diabetic now. Again, don't wait any longer. If you're loving what you hear in the kitchen, Share this podcast with your friends and family or anyone you know living with diabetes. And if you like it, leave a comment at Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts. So head over to my website to find the latest link to the latest episode. And again, thank you for listening. Our podcast is sponsored by my friends at U.S. Med Supply. Our theme music by the Happy Diabetic Kitchen Band. And of course, Scout and Tucker, our kitchen mascot. Scout is looking at me like, would you feed me already? And Tucker is sound asleep. This year, better than last year. This month, better than last month. This week, better than last week. And this day, better than yesterday. Thank you everybody for tuning in and let me leave you with a thought. Linda Henley once said, if God had intended us to follow recipes, he wouldn't have given us grandmothers. So long for now and remember, no one loves you more than me.
And again, thank you for listening.
Thanks again for listening. The material on this podcast is provided for educational purposes only and is not to be used for medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Before starting any weight loss program or style of eating, I would highly recommend you consult your physician or healthcare provider. I'm a chef living with type 2 diabetes. I'm not a doctor, dietitian, or certified diabetic educator. Although I have three children, Attila, Dracula, and Frankenstein, that makes me kind of a psychiatrist of sorts. If you're loving what you hear in the kitchen, please leave a comment or feedback at Stitcher, Google Play, or Apple Podcasts, or wherever you're listening. Your thoughts and your comments are greatly appreciated. Thank you for tuning in.